Observe this stunning image captured by the James Webb Space Telescope. Right away, you'll spot two types of objects. First, you'll notice the nearby stars in our Milky Way galaxy, appearing as points of light with distinctive diffraction spikes. In the more distant background, you'll find entirely new galaxies, each housing billions of stars stretched into elliptical or spiral shapes. You likely won't discern distinct individual objects within these distant galaxies as they are too far away and merge with other light sources. However, there is one exception. One type of object is so luminous that it can be seen from billions of light years away, standing out from all the stars in its host galaxy, a quasar. What if I told you that numerous tiny quasars are hiding in plain sight, right within our own Milky Way? How is that possible considering quasars are among the brightest objects in the universe? In this video, we'll discover how this can be, and how a team of scientists used images of a nearby microquasar to gain insights into the nature of quasars across the cosmos. For centuries, astronomers have gazed at the night sky. However, it wasn't until the 1950s that they began to map the universe in radio waves instead of visible light. Imagine this as astronomers putting on night vision goggles. At first, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Many galaxies that emitted visible light also emitted radio waves, making them visible with or without the goggles. But then, astronomers detected something new among the known stars and galaxies, an object that was extremely bright in radio waves, but had never been seen in visible light. And it wasn't just one of these objects. By 1960, astronomers had identified hundreds of these mysterious radio sources across the sky. At first, they had no idea what could be producing these radio waves. Some even speculated that they might be coming from a giant intergalactic network of alien radios. However, follow-up observations with more precise instruments, like the Hale Telescope, revealed that these objects could also be seen in the visible spectrum. They were just extremely small and faint. They were too small to be galaxies, as they appeared as points of light rather than smeared out blobs. Yet, they couldn't be ordinary stars either, because stars typically don't emit much energy in radio waves. Due to their puzzling nature, these objects were initially called quasi-stellar radio sources, which means something like a star, but not a star, that emits a lot of radio waves. This mouthful of a name was eventually shortened to the more familiar term, quasars. Despite their catchy name, it took astronomers and physicists nearly three decades to unravel the true nature of quasars. While they aren't alien radios, the reality is just as captivating. Quasars are intimately linked to black holes, but not just any black holes. These are supermassive black holes, millions or even billions of times more massive than the Sun, often residing at the centers of galaxies. While black holes themselves are dark, their accretion disks create a stunning display. Matter spiraling into the black hole releases tremendous energy, much of which is emitted as light. Additionally, some accretion disks expel relativistic jets of ionized matter, guided by intense magnetic fields and influenced by the black hole's spin and surrounding environment. Understanding quasars provides valuable insights into the cosmic phenomena at play in the hearts of galaxies, shedding light on the intricate interplay between black holes, their surroundings, and the evolution of galaxies. The particles within these jets can travel across the universe as cosmic rays, traversing from one galaxy to another, emitting radio signals as they interact with intergalactic magnetic fields. In total, quasars emit such immense amounts of energy that a single quasar in a distant galaxy can outshine all the other hundreds of billions of stars in that galaxy combined. This is why when quasars were first observed, they appeared as small as stars, but far brighter than any star outside of the Milky Way could ever be. 
Now, the Milky Way harbors its own supermassive black hole at its center, known as Sagittarius A asterisk, pronounced A star. However, the accretion disk surrounding our black hole is too thin and faint to resemble anything close to a quasar. Unless something dramatic occurs, like the predicted collision with the Andromeda galaxy billions of years in the future, Sagittarius A asterisk will likely remain relatively tranquil. On one hand, this is fortunate for us, as a quasar located so close to Earth could emit enough high-energy radiation to pose a potential threat to terrestrial life. This raises intriguing questions about the nature of life in galaxies that do host quasars. However, on the other hand, we're missing out on a second celestial light source that could have illuminated our planet almost as brightly as the sun. And it would have been incredible to study a quasar up close. How is this possible? If the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy isn't a quasar, where else could they be? It took some time but scientists eventually found that quasars can form around ordinary black holes too, not just supermassive ones. These ordinary black holes, only a few times more massive than the Sun, typically form when giant stars collapse, meaning there are numerous scattered throughout practically any galaxy. You might not expect these black holes to host their own accretion disks, but occasionally a nearby orbiting star may get drawn into their gravitational pull serving as a source for a smaller, less potent version of a quasar, a microquasar. Even though the jets of a microquasar are much weaker, their proximity to Earth makes them easier to study. This proximity allows us to learn more about the properties and dynamics of both microquasars and their larger counterparts. The very first microquasar was discovered in 1979 and was named SS 433, as it was the 433rd entry in a catalogue of stars compiled by astronomers Nicholas Sandulik and Bruce Stevenson two years earlier. To date, only a few microquasars have been identified, with SS 433 being a major focus of scientific research and curiosity. Despite its ordinary sounding name, SS 433 is quite extraordinary. It features a Type A supergiant star orbiting a stellar mass black hole in a binary system. As the black hole pulls in material from the supergiant, it produces a pair of jets that shoot out perpendicular to our line of sight. This means the jets themselves won't hit us or our detectors directly. However, as these jets travel outward, they emit light in all directions, allowing us to observe them at various wavelengths and gain valuable insights into how they are generated. One of the initial discoveries was that SS 433 exhibits two distinct types of jets, inner jets that extend just a few light years from the black hole before dissipating, and outer jets that emerge approximately 75 light years away, spanning an additional 300 light years or so. Despite decades of study, many questions remain unanswered regarding the formation and termination of these outer jets, as well as their composition. Recent research from the HES collaboration offers intriguing insights into these mysteries. One notable finding revolves around the presence and distribution of high-energy gamma rays emitted by SS-433. Typically, conventional understanding dictates that stars or accretion disks don't emit gamma rays due to their relatively low temperatures. However, the outer jets of SS 433 defy this expectation by emitting copious amounts of gamma rays. What's particularly puzzling is that despite the extreme heat of the outer jets, the emitted gamma ray spectrum doesn't align with what would be expected from a conventional thermal distribution of photons. This discrepancy begs the question, what mechanism is responsible for generating these gamma rays in the outer jets of SS 433? The current hypothesis proposes that the outer jets of SS 433 harbor high-energy electrons capable of colliding with lower-energy photons 
traversing the system, thereby transferring their energy to these photons through a mechanism known as inverse Compton scattering. Researchers at Hears recognized that analyzing the energy levels of the emitted gamma rays could yield crucial insights into the energetic behavior of the electrons within the jets responsible for their generation. Their findings provided compelling support for the inverse Compton scattering theory. In particular, the most energetic gamma rays, each carrying over 10 terelectron volts of energy per photon, roughly 10 trillion times more energy than a photon of visible light, predominantly originated from the innermost section of the outer jets. Conversely, gamma rays with lower energies were traced back to progressively greater distances along the jets of SS-433. This distribution pattern suggests that electrons farther down the jets possess diminished energy but transferring to photons compared to electrons near the inception point. Essentially, as the electrons traverse the outer jets, they gradually lose energy, likely due to successive collisions with photons. But how did the electrons gain such immense energies initially? Models suggest that when ejected from the black hole, their initial velocity was approximately one quarter of the speed of light. However, by the time these electrons reach the outer jets, they appear to be moving at speeds exceeding 99% of the speed of light, amplifying their initial energies by a factor of one billion. The Hess collaboration proposes that this remarkable acceleration occurs at the base of the outer jets, where shock waves form due to intricate arrangements of magnetic fields. Each time an electron encounters the shock front, it undergoes a significant increase in speed, similar to crossing a boost pad in a video game like Mario Kart. Furthermore, because of the back-and-forth motion of electrons within the jet, some electrons repeatedly pass through the shock front, effectively experiencing multiple speed boosts, a phenomenon akin to an infinite speed glitch. This process, known as diffusive shock acceleration, likely plays a crucial role in boosting electron energies to hundreds of terelectron volts, enough to generate the high-energy gamma rays observed by HES. But uncovering the mechanisms behind photon production within the outer jets of SS-433 is just the beginning. Microquasars scattered throughout the Milky Way hold vast reservoirs of information about the inner workings of even the most massive quasars found in the cores of distant galaxies. Now that we know where to look, microquasars are no longer hidden gems, but rather beacons in the sky, inviting astronomers to capture their beauty across the entire electromagnetic spectrum and revealing increasingly astonishing discoveries. Thank you for watching the video. Please support us. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. We wish you the best. See you later.